Our reading today is from John chapter 19, verses 38 to 42. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We do not hear much about Holy Saturday in the Bible. For the ancient Israelites, Saturday was the day of rest, of completion, the day of Sabbath. But when we hear the words of the disciples walking along the Emmaus Road a few days later, we get a glimpse into their Saturday experience. We had hoped, they say, that he was the one to redeem Israel. This Sabbath would have felt very far from complete or peaceful. The words of Psalm 22 come to mind. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. I wonder, on this Sabbath day, if the family and friends of Jesus found these very words on their lips and in their hearts. In a garden at the very beginning, humanity hid from God and he called out to them. Where are you? When we reach the Psalms, we realise how great this divide has become. God cries out to humanity, where are you? And humanity cries out to God, where are you? On this Holy Saturday, when the body of Jesus had been laid to rest, when the work has been completed and the time for rest has come, the words of Jesus still ring in our ears. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Where are you? John tells us there was a garden in the place where he was crucified and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. In the place of our hiding, in the place of our dying, in a garden, peace had been made. On this Holy Saturday, when the question, where are you, is raised again, a new voice is heard among the chorus of humanity. It is the voice of God speaking as one of us, living and dying as one of us. Now we have heard our own words in the mouth of the one who is both God and man. We find peace knowing that the divide is no more. Truly, in the long and holy Saturday, in feelings of hopeless abandon, we too find a place where Christ has been. We find communion with Christ in our suffering, even in the depths of mourning, disappointment, fear and confusion. We know that we can say with confidence the words of Psalm 139. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. Let us pray. Father, on this day of completion, 
when the work has been done. We pray for the peace that transcends understanding. Thank you that even when we find ourselves doubting, mourning and wandering, we know that this is not a place outside of your communion with us. You are with us more profoundly than we at first imagined. For those who wait, for those who mourn, for those who doubt, for those who fear, for those who feel abandoned, on this holy Saturday, grant them your peace. We ask this in the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. <laughs>